eight game winning streak back to back AFC North champs. But why are we still here in the disrespect? Let's talk about it. What it do is the 513 with your boy J.E. on the Cincinnati podcast. Hope everybody's having a beautiful Monday out there. Your boy is back. And uh, yeah, I got to say, I apologize. I've been on a little bit of a hiatus. My schedule has been insane. I travel for the holidays for Thanksgiving. I travel for Christmas. I travel for New Year's. And here I am back again today on this lovely Monday on uh, January 10th talking to you all about our Bengals. So apologies, but I'm back. And I want to talk about the Cincinnati Bengals. I want to talk about the playoffs. And I want to talk about and address the disrespect, right? And before we start talking about the playoffs and the matchup we got coming up with the Ravens that we know we kind of got coming down the pipeline, I want to talk about the disrespect, right, that the Bengals have been receiving, not only now, most recently with this new NFL playoff rule change that all of a sudden had to go into place that didn't disrupt any organization but the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> I mean, disrupted a couple of the organizations as well too, but there were just a lot less favorable scenarios for the Bengals than there were for other teams. Now, the Bengals took care of business. They beat the Ravens, so they don't have to worry about the coin flip, but um, that in itself, that coin flip scenario, the Bengals, let's say they went out there and lost the fluky game to the Ravens. They would have been the only team ever to win the division title and have an opportunity or, I guess, risk playing on the road for the first game, which is absolutely mm-hmm. insane. Uh, if you talk about a team winning a division title and, and having to go on the road, I mean, that's the perks of winning a division title, right? You get to play at home, at least for the first playoff game, at least for the first game. So um, I thought that was a little crazy. And really, I I think when you look at the Bengals and you look at the history of the team and um, really being one of those teams that's kind of always been kind of right here but not able to get over that hump, it's like a roller coaster where – you know, you get to the top of the roller coaster, but it gets stuck. Got to get maintenance to get to go over the top. And the Bengals have kind of been that kind of team, right? They've been a team that has had success, playoff success, gone to Super Bowls, multiple Super Bowls at that, had great quarterbacks, had great players, but they just haven't got the job done and got over the hump. And I think that is one of the reasons why the Bengals are one of the most disrespected teams across the league, not to mention Mike Brown is a guy who maybe not a lot of owners like. Um, The Bengals also are an organization that are very – they're a family-run organization, and maybe some of the owners with deep pockets may not like that because they may run business a little bit differently than what some other NFL teams run across the league. And – Quite frankly, man, I, I just think the Bengals are a team that um, we haven't been media darlings. You talk about the Marvin Lewis era and really kind of the not I wouldn't say the tainted reputation that our team had, but the team, in fact, did have a reputation. And I'm not going to I'm not going to perpetuate or, you know, talk about the reputation that they had at the time, but they had a reputation. And it wasn't always the right depiction of the team, but there were a lot of issues back then, you know, through the Marvin Lewis era where some of those narratives that they made wrote about the team could have hit like someone throwing darts at a dartboard every once in a while. Um, And I think maybe that's part of the reason why the Bengals have been disrespected now to now, but um I just truly believe this team has been disrespected because overall they haven't won a championship. And I I think that's the biggest thing. I think they're a small market team 
and you know small market teams don't draw a lot of revenue. Uh, ideally, for the NFL, the Bengals of new are changing that ideology. And Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Jesse Bates, Joe Mixon, uh, Hayden Hurst, Trey Hendrickson, Sam Hubbard, CTB, Eli Apple, Von Bell, Logan Wilson, Jermaine Pratt, DJ Reader, BJ Hill, all these guys are contributing and they're changing the narrative, they're changing the narrative on the team, and they're also really showing the NFL that hey. Cincinnati may be a small market team, but when we play, everybody across the world is watching, right? I want to say, I'm not sure how many games the Bengals have played in that have broke records this year, but it's been a number of games. And when it's a big game, Kansas, the Kansas City game, um, some other games as well, too, the Bengals have broken records, man. Um, broke records as far as viewership. And when you talk about viewership, that's revenue, right? Um, not necessarily – I'm not going to go into the details, but that's not necessarily – it's not necessarily revenue per se, but those things drive revenue. Um, and I, I think the Bengals are a hot commodity right now. I do think we've seen some disrespect. I do think the, the rule change that recently took place is really – it's based on this old way of thinking about the Cincinnati Bengals and owners of old who are have been a part of the NFL for years and years and years, perpetuating and continuing to allow this narrative to, to live on because of some, quite frankly, some bull jive that they may have believed way back when, or maybe some you know, altercation or disagreement they would have, may have had with Mike Brown way back then, or maybe watching Andy Dalton not be the guy and not be able to get us over the hump way back when and say, hey, those Bengals are never going to win a playoff game like people said, you know, were saying to us before we went on that run last year and made it to the Super Bowl. But the truth is, you know, outside of the, the disrespect, um, which I think every team in the NFL – every fan base in the NFL probably feels like their team receives disrespect. Even the chiefs, I don't know what kind of disrespect they could be receiving, but I think every fan base can find some type of disrespect uh, to their team at some point in time. And I think when you look at, you know, the Bengals, I do agree that the disrespect is probably, a lot more than what other franchises may see, especially with this rule change. And I'm going to leave it alone. I won't talk about it anymore else. But really what cures that and what fixes that and what changes the narrative and what, what addresses and really kills the disrespect is winning, right? Winning cures everything. Winning cures everything, right? Back in the beginning of the – well, back in the beginning of the, the football season before – I want to say maybe July, June, before the season kicked off, a power rankings came out from a couple ESPN folks over there. Um, I'm not sure. I think Seth Walder is a guy who works over at ESPN, and he did a power rankings. And after coming off of a Super Bowl appearance, right, after the Cincinnati Bengals came off of a Super Bowl appearance, do you know where Seth Walter had the Bengals ranked? 16. <laughs> 16 in the power rankings behind the Bills, Packers, Rams, Chiefs, Buccaneers, Cowboys, Chargers. Um, oh, tch, I, I'm trying to see now who he, who he had us behind. Chargers, Colts, Cardinals, Browns, Ravens, Broncos, Vikings. I'm sure the Eagles are in there. And I am sure the Saints are in there. My dog is drinking water right here, so you might hear that. My apologies. But, yeah, I mean, he had his rank 16. And um, that that's insane. You know, that is that is insane, man, when you talk about the disrespect that some of the people were really showing the Bengals um, this offseason, man. And, and all they did was go back and win another AFC North championship. All they did was 
after being five and four, go on an eight game one streak in a stretch where people told the Bengals and people said to the Bengals, hey, this is a tough back stretch right here. You might not win nine games this season, right? People were literally saying that, saying, hey, you might not win nine games. And the Bengals proceeded to go on an eight game win streak and, uh, you know, earn the third seed in the playoffs and earn some, you know, home field, uh, earn the AFC North championship and earn a home field playoff game. Um, a guaranteed home field playoff game after beating the Ravens this past Sunday. And look, when you, when you look at things like, hey, ASC North titles over the past last 10 years, the Steelers have four, the Bengals have four, the Ravens have two, and the Browns, I care not to tell you, but I think you know the answer anyway. The Browns have zero, right? And I'm not shitting on the mm-hmm. Browns. I'm, I'm Excuse my French. I'm not taking a dump on the Browns. But what I am going to say is that I think when you look at the disrespect that we've seen, it's coming to a close. And there's, there always will be haters, but as long as you win, you got an opportunity to shut the hate up and change the narrative, which this team is doing, which Joe Burrow is taking a key part in. And I'm so excited. And it's such a great time to be a Bengals fan. And this is what our fandom loyalty has paid off, you know, being loyal to this team, always believing in this team has gotten us here today. And um, I, that's the, the beautiful part about fandom, right? Fandom is is like, it's interesting because there's a lot of fans out here that jump from team to team just based on them being winners. And really, when you look at the Cincinnati Bengals fan base, it's a lot of loyal fans who have been here and been down for the ride through thick and thin, through the bad, through the good. Um, and it's a, it's a amazing fan base. We will pick up some bandwagon fans along the way because that's what happens when you start to have success. Uh, but there's a lot of loyal fans in Cincinnati, man. I'm, and I'm so happy for everybody getting to experience that and being able to support this team and watch them do amazing things on and off the field, uh, which I, I think is incredible. Um, <clears throat> so, Let's talk about the playoffs, right? The Bengals play the Baltimore Ravens at 8.15 on Sunday night this coming Sunday in in the primetime slot on Sunday night football at Paycor Stadium. Um, And they just beat the Ravens. They had Anthony Brown at quarterback. Defense forced a a heck of a lot of turnovers. Uh, They played a phenomenal game. And... A lot of people looked at that game and they said, hey, how does this game impact the next game coming up? Or or maybe Ravens fans said, hey, look, this game for us, we knew we were going to lose and we should not have been in that game. And I'm telling you, our defense bottled you guys up in the second half. And I feel confident that if we get Lamar Jackson back, we're going to win. That's fine. I don't don't think that's an issue. And quite frankly, if you're a fan of a team, you should believe in that team. But let me tell you this, right? That game against the Ravens this past past weekend, it was nothing more than a scrimmage, right? The starters for the Bengals did remain in the game the entire game. And Joe Burrow wasn't as sharp as he should have been. The the score probably should have been 40-something to three, quite frankly. Uh, ended up a little bit closer than that, 27 to 15, I believe. But um, quite frankly, Joe wasn't as sharp as he should have been. It was a scrimmage. And when you're playing these divisional games, it's a really good opportunity, I feel like, to get a feel for how someone maybe covers you in man, maybe how they run their routes, how you know what kind of play call they like in certain, certain situations. Um, but I can assure you, the Bengals were super vanilla, super, super vanilla uh, in that game. And quite frankly, they probably didn't show their hand a lot or really do anything, I think, creative in that game. 
to uh, truly show the Ravens what the plan was this coming week or to really, um, I think, I think in that second half, the Bengals were not really focused on running up the score. They took a couple, a couple of shots, excuse me. They took a couple of shots, but um, the reality is that I don't think this team was firing on all cylinders. And I also don't think they were locked in, you know, foot on a, on a hundred trying to run up the score. Um, now I do think the Ravens defense is, is a phenomenal defense and a, and the best defense in the AFC. Um, the, the truth is that this is going to benefit both teams getting a fill for each other. Um, maybe Baltimore feeling like, Hey, look, we, we were really physical with them and uh, we, we let them know that it's not going to be an easy game. And maybe the Bengals getting a wake up call after the scary situation with DeMar Hamlin prayers up to DeMar Hamlin, by the way, he, he was able to get out of the hospital and go back to Buffalo to do his recovery. Um, but maybe it gave the Bengals a wake up call saying, Hey, these guys don't care what we just experienced last week. They don't give a crap. And no matter what, they're going to come out and hit us hard and take their shots. And um, it's something that can't be taken lightly. You know, I think the Bengals took a couple hard hits. And I think Joe probably threw a couple of hospital balls, quite frankly. And uh, those are some things that, that can't happen. Uh, in this coming game. But I, I, again, you know, I think this was a great game, probably more beneficial to the Bengals than the Ravens because the Bengals being a part of that traumatic incident coming into this game against the Ravens, it had to be in the back of their minds the whole time, right? It had to be right there, not even the back of their mind, in the forefront of their mind thinking, dang it. This literally just happened, and what if I could be next, right? So I, I think this kind of helps them get the jitters out, um, you know, be able to kind of get back to playing ball at the at a at a you know at a, at a reasonable speed and getting the physicality back. Because I can tell you one thing's for sure: when, if and when the Bengals beat the Ravens this coming Sunday. It's going to be because they absolutely out physical the Ravens and dominated them. Right? The Bengals are going to run up and put points up on the board. They're going to. It's a given. They should have scored 40 points in this game. I would be surprised if they don't score 30 points in the next matchup against the Ravens. Again, the best defense in the AFC. They'll score 30 points in this defense. But what I was what I was going to say is that the Bengals need to make sure that in this matchup they are the hammer and not the nail, right? And what I mean by that, be the – it's very simple concept, right? I don't think I need to even explain it, but be the hammer and not the nail. When you got a hammer, you take that hammer, and when you want to hang up a picture, you put that nail on the wall and you hit that nail into the wall to keep it stable in there and, you know, hang the picture on it. You want to be the one doing the hitting, not the one getting hit, right? So <laughs> be the hammer and not the nail. They used to always tell us that in college. And that's what the Bengals got to do. Um, they got to be physical, exploit, you know, exploit matchups, take their shots. I think there'll be some deep shot opportunities there. And uh, they need to challenge the receivers, man. I, I These receivers aren't good. I do think Lou Anarumo kept it very vanilla. And um that's kind of that's kind of my my take on what they need to do. Now, will Lamar Jackson play and how does that impact the game? I think Lamar Jackson's incredible, one of the best athletes and quarterbacks in the NFL. And it does change the game a little bit. Uh it does change the game a little bit. We know Lamar Jackson's one and three in the playoffs. We know that um he struggled in the postseason, but here's the deal. When you start the postseason at 0-0, Lamar Jackson, if he is able to play, if his knee's doing doing okay, uh, he'll, he'll play good. And truthfully, I, I, he's extremely talented. I don't think he's better than Joe Burrow, 
But what I what I do think it impacts the game in the sense that you you need to get on the board a little bit earlier, and you need to be super aggressive and take shots. Um, and I think that's kind of, and I I think that's, I think that's kind of really when you're looking at Lamar Jackson potentially coming back. You talk about on offense being more aggressive, continuing really not the same approach. Really, you would have the same approach with Lamar Jackson, Tyler Huntley, or Anthony Robinson, I think his name is, or Anthony Brown. I'm not sure what his name is, but you have the same approach because the Ravens are a running team. Um, They want to run first, play action, whether Lamar is in there or not. Score early, put them in situations to where they have to pass, and um, go win the game. That I mean that that's that's pretty much it. I, I think the Ravens defense is the best defense in the AFC, but I'll tell you what, the Cincinnati Bengals are probably right behind them, right? I think the Vi- I think the um, Bills have a good defense. I was I was gonna say Vikings. I think the Bills have a good defense, but I truly do not believe they're better than our defense. I think our corners could be tested, but uh, let's be real, man. Um, the the Baltimore Ravens don't have the receivers to test our corners. Uh, and there's no reason why our defense couldn't be the second best defense in the AFC actively right now in the playoffs. Um, so I'm really excited to see that matchup this Sunday night. Um, I think the Bengals have an, a really, really, really strong chance to win. Uh, I just recently checked. I think the line's at six and a half. We don't know if Lamar is playing. We're going to find out more on Wednesday. Um I did see a report that said, hey, Lamar Jackson is telling people that he's coming back, but there's people around him that don't think he's coming back. So a lot of mixed signals, but regardless if Lamar Jackson comes out there or not, the Bengals need to be ready to win. And the Bengals need to be locked in, which I know they will. I know Joe Burrow wasn't as sharp as he needs to be in that last game. But I'm telling you what, whenever the moment is big, Joe Burrow, Joe Shiesty, number nine, <laughs> number nine, always plays at an elite level. And um, I'm very excited to see this Bengals team. I'm very excited to see them get ready to make a run again. And uh, if I had to if I had to tell you all one thing today, I truly, 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 truly believe This team is better than the team we had last year. And, and if they could continue to stay hot in this playoffs, they may, they will get the first Super Bowl championship for the city of Cincinnati. And the city will burn down to the damn ground. And we'll all be there celebrating popping bottles, having a great time um, (laughs) because it will be such an amazing day. So um, I think the Bengals have an awesome chance to win, man. I don't don't care if Lamar Jackson plays or uh, hell, if they they bring um, Dan Marino, if they somehow (laughs) revive Dan Marino and his career and get him back out there. But um, ultimately, look – the Bengals have received some disrespect over the years. Now they'll receive more in the future. But truthfully, just win, right? Just win. Don't worry about it. Brian Dawkins said this a while ago, and it always rang true. Respect is earned, not given. And quite frankly, they may not give us our respect even when we deserve it. But if we continue to win, continue to punch people in the mouth and our opponents in the mouth and continue to show the league that we're here for the long run, they're not going to have a choice but to respect us. Who day? I appreciate you all rocking with the Winston that with the 513 and the Winston Nighty podcast. Like and subscribe if you like the content and catch us on spaces every single day, 9 a.m. to 4 or 5. And, uh, Let's go get this win. Who day?